Hello guys, welcome to my channel. I'm going to start a new course titled Design and Analysis of Algorithms. Now algorithm is a very important concept. It is at the heart of computing. If you look around, algorithms are everywhere. Now algorithm is nothing but a set of steps, step by step procedure for doing something, for solving a given problem. If you look around, you have seen algorithms everywhere. So in this course, we're going to talk in details about various different algorithms that is being used for designing very good softwares. Apart from looking at new algorithms, we'll be also looking at the tools for analyzing algorithms. This course is going to be a very interesting course for those who want to learn programming. And I expect you to have some basic fundamental of programming and some understanding of data structures like stack, queue, linked list, graph, tree, etc. But whenever required, I'll be covering the basics of all those data structures as well. So please do not worry about that. Now, if you look around, algorithms are everywhere. Right? Like, let me take an example of a dictionary. Right? All of you have used dictionary in your lifetime, sometime in your life. Right? Now, whenever you search for a word in a dictionary, you do not search, you know, page by page like this. You know? But what you do actually do is, you apply a particular algorithm for actually searching a word in a dictionary. You actually apply the algorithm that is called as binary search, which we'll be again discussing in our future lectures. Right? So we apply binary search to search for a word in a dictionary, right? We don't flip pages one by one, right? What we do is we just flip it at the middle, right? And check whether our word is in the left hand side or the right hand side, right? So that is binary search that we are doing, right? So all of you have used binary search in your life. So you are using an algorithm, right? And you are also using, all of you are using Google Maps. I know that, right? So Google Maps helps us to find out uh, helps us to navigate from a, from place A to place B. Suppose you'd like to go from Siliguri to Kolkata, there may be various paths for doing so, right? Now you'd like to find the shortest path, shortest possible path, so that you can travel in the quickest possible time. Now, Google Map actually implements shortest path finding algorithm. But that's very interesting. So algorithms are backing all the software that you're using actually. Algorithms are, I've already told you, algorithms are at the heart of computing. All of you do shopping online, isn't it? So, like suppose you're shopping something on Amazon, right? Amazon, Amazon has a very, you know, a very powerful recommendation algorithm. Amazon knows what you will buy next. Okay, it has got an algorithm which will automatically identify your profile and it will predict what product you are likely to buy next. So that's a recommendation algorithm, right? Please be aware, you are not buying something from Amazon, you are being forced to buy something, right? The recommendation algorithm is doing all the work for Amazon, right? So Amazon has recommended, so algorithms are everywhere. That's what I'm to say. Now you're watching this video on YouTube, right? Now YouTube has a very important, like, uh, a feature of video compression. Right? Based on your internet speed, YouTube decides what quality of video should, you, should, should be streamed to you. Right? So the quality of video depends upon the bandwidth or the internet speed that you are having. So, so, so algorithm like YouTube implements uh, video compression algorithms. Right? So you are using, right now you are, you are actually using, if you are watching this video on YouTube, you are using, you know, what you say, video compression algorithms that is being implemented by YouTube, right? So algorithms are everywhere. So therefore, it's a very important subject for you to grasp, right? Now, see, if you if you are given new if you are given a problem to be solved, right? Now that problem can be solved in n different ways. Suppose I ask, I give you a problem A. The problem A can be maybe can be solved in three different ways, right? Now you need to decide which is the best way to solve your problem. Suppose uh, I ask you to sort a list of numbers, right? Now there are various sorting algorithms, right? Uh, your bubble sort, insertion sort, selection sort, merge sort, quick sort, 
heap sort, counting sort, there are so many, right? Now you need to decide, the problem is sorting, right? Now you need to decide which is the best algorithm for you to sort the list of numbers, right? Now here comes something called as analysis aspect of algorithm. So you should have some tools which will let you know, right, which one is best. Which one is the best algorithm for your, for your problem, right? So you, need to, you should be able to, you should be capable of deciding that, right? Now you can't say that just by looking at algorithm like this algorithm looks very beautiful, so I'll choose this. Not that way. How do you decide that algorithms are beautiful, right? So for that, you need to actually derive something called as time complexity of an algorithm, right? So time is a very critical resource in, in, in any given computer, right? So if you are being able to solve any problem faster, then you are doing a great job, right? So you are supposed to choose an algorithm which will solve the given problem in the fastest possible time that's possible for you for that particular problem, right? So in analysis, we'll be actually learning different ways of actually coming, deriving the time complexity of an algorithm, right? And given n number of algorithms, we'll decide which one to use for our problem, right? So analysis will help us to identify which is the best algorithm for, for the current scenario, all right? And in the design aspect of an algorithm, so first we'll be covering analysis aspect. The first module will be covering analysis aspect. And in the second module, we'll be covering design aspect. Now there are various ways of designing an algorithm. Already existing algorithms are there, right? Which are based on various different design principles. So we'll be learning all those design principles so that we will get an idea and we'll be able to solve a, a very new unfamiliar problem, you know, by relating with the concept that we have learned in the design aspect. Right? So, there are various design strategies. Like, I've, as I talked about binary search, right? Binary search is based on a design aspect called as divide and conquer. Right? So, there are various design aspects. Divide and conquer is there. Greedy techniques are there. Dynamic programming. Backtracking. Branch and bound. So, we'll be covering all these topics. And in all these topics, we'll be covering individual algorithms so that we get a big picture of what that aspect is all about so that we apply that aspect in solving a new unfamiliar problem, right? So solving the already known problem is not a big deal, right? So we should be capable of solving a new problem, new unfamiliar problem, okay? So now let's see why, why we need to study this subject called this algorithms. Why to study design and analysis of algorithms? As I've already told you, algorithms are at the heart of computing. Right? Algorithms are at the heart of computing and you have already seen that algorithms are backing all the softwares in the industry. It is. So learning algorithm obviously becomes the first thing that you can do because that will make you a better programmer. See, without learning algorithms, you can write programs. Not a big deal. You can write programs. Your program may work. For a, for a given input, it will give you the correct output. But if you know algorithms, you can write better programs. If you write better program, you become a good programmer. If you become a good programmer, you make better softwares. If you make better softwares, the better softwares are more marketable, right? So it's all about if you write better software, you will have more number of users using it, your software. Usability of your software will increase drastically, right? So if you want to become a very good programmer, right? If you want to become a pro programmer, you should have two things handy with you, right? The first thing is algorithm and other one is data structures. If you make a proper mixture of algorithm and data structure, you can make a good program. So this course is all about algorithms, right? And we'll be seeing various new problems that, that algorithms are solving in our day-to-day -day life. So, uh, this is the overview of this course, right? In my next video, I'll be going to talk about, we'll be formally defining an all. Today, we have defined algorithm informally. In the next video, I'm going to define algorithm formally. And we're going to see what are the criteria that all algorithms should satisfy. So, till then, stay tuned. Thank you.